Squire is a business intelligence service helping you assess opportunities and risks for every commercial property in England and Wales. Every quarter, we update the occupier history for just about every business premise in our database so that you can see what the business environment is like in any area you may be running a business in or interested in starting one. There are 348 local authorities responsible for collecting business rates, and they publish their data in every way you can imagine and a whole bunch it's best not to think about. Every quarter, we need to restructure these spreadsheets into a single, standardized format so we can import it into our database. This is how we do it. We receive our data sets in a variety of formats. They can be appropriate only for one file, there can be multi-files making up a complete data set, and in this case, we're going to start off with the simplest possible example, a single file in a very simple structure. This one is for Bath. We start typing, we can get the local authority name. Um, we choose the cycle. We can pick any of the previous cycles if we need to update data. And we get a variety of formats, oil, uh, all void or occupied. Um, sometimes we only get uh, part of the data. We hit submit and automatically the data goes up. Once we go back to the authorities, we can see that it has been uploaded. We can sort by status, find Bath, and we can review the merge, which is the next step. What we get is a basic idea of what the data structure looks like in the first few rows, and we can pick which column needs to be used as the billing reference. This is the standard row uh, column that we use for joins uh, to import into our database. We hit submit. The phase after review merge is review structure. This is the main work area that we need to uh, ensure that we're bringing things in. Each uh, schema column is listed here automatically with the uh, action that is required to import the data. Basically, each field gets its own method. The method consists of an action, one of these red terms over here along with the green fields that are we need to now match. So we need to match these green fields from the source data into the uh, actions that we want to create. And from this, for each column, we will end up creating a method uh, which will then be used to wrangle the data in. You can see here the first few rows and you can get an idea of what the data might look like. So again, we can see the BA ref will go in here. Um, a brief uh, uh, description of the actions. New is obviously self-explanatory, it's a new column. Order, this is a draggable list. If there was more than one field, more than one column that associated with the billing reference and we weren't sure which to take, um, we might have gaps. So maybe one field fills in the gap in another field. You'd fill in, in an order and what would happen is that it would start with the first column and then gradually fill in gaps from the from from the going down the column, keeping everything that we already had, only updating where there's a gap. Order by newest means we can associate a date. So we could say, well, there's a date column here. We want to associate this column with this date, uh, and we're then going to be able to order by which of these dates is the newest. Order by oldest is the, is the opposite of that, where we'd pick the oldest column to import. So the order at that point is purely by date. A calculation is something that we might need to do very basically to uh, combine multiple uh, integer or floating point um, fields. Categorize is where we have textual data within a column, and we want to be able to convert that textual data into predefined columns. A join is simply a join of two fields. So if we decided that the occupant name and the postcode needed to be in a single field, we could do a join, and again, it would join in order. As we finish each column, you can see that this goes green from red. So we get to the actual rates paid, and we can now add in the new types of things that we need here. We have on the top right here of the little workspace, we have these black buttons, plus, minus, and an additional field. These are the modifiers. In terms of a calculation, we need to define whether or not the numbers are positive or negative numbers. Each field will automatically simply be um, uh, fixed so that whether they were negative or positive, 
they will be converted into, into positive numbers. We need to add that number back. So we put in the plus and prop BA rates contains our rates data, the actual rates paid. And we now have that calculation in there. Plus, if there was a minus that we needed to subtract some reliefs or exemptions that we could see a column for, you could put in a minus and then those columns in order. Rate payer name. Uh, in this case, occupier name. Postcode. There's an actual postcode column with that name, which makes it a bit easier. The occupation status, we've got two columns for this. We've got a prop empty and a prop occupied. So in this case, we want to use the modifier again. Modifiers for a category can be in two ways. If your category or if your field consists of uh, some detail and then a whole bunch of blank spaces, you could decide to categorize by the blanks being false and the the data in there being positive. So say you wanted to simply categorize something by uh, a field that said, um, here's where they get reliefs. We're only interested in that they're getting reliefs. We're not interested in the amount. We're not interested in anything other than yes, they do or no, they don't. So we can then specify a negative, meaning that we're not interested in the data itself. We're simply interested in whether there's a positive or, or a negative um, uh, response in each of those things. But in our case, we are interested in what the data say. We've got Y's and N's and there may be something else in there. So we're going to say we want to categorize plus and let's choose prop occupied. Okay. Um, then there's occupation state date. And in this case, we've got we've got two columns that contain a date. We've got a prop empty date column and a prop occupied date column. There are two ways we could do this. But in this case, again, we're going to start off with the simplest way, which is simply to pick them in order. Um, this will simply gap fill. So where we have dates, we will have, and where we don't, um, it will be left as blank. Okay. And finally, rates relief categories, there's nothing here. If you noticed, we also had these little stars. Some of these categories are compulsory and some of them are not. So here we have a gray star. It means we don't actually need these reliefs categories. We don't have anything, so I remove that and this all goes green. At this point, we can quickly review. Are we happy with this? And hit submit. The next step after we've completed restructuring and creating our methods uh, filled with actions is to review the categories that we've uh, created. Now in our case, we've only created one category of data, which is the occupation status. Here we can see what true and false means when we hover over the schema term. It can either be void or occupied. Um, so true equals occupied, false equals void. We now need to drag the terms that were in those columns into either of these to be able to populate it. The challenge we see here is that it looks as if there were some erroneous data that went into those columns that doesn't bear any relationship to what we're actually looking for. And we don't actually know what these should be. But there are some good defaults set up in our system. The occupation state, if we do not know, it will automatically be regarded as true. That is the way that we have decided to deal with this data. But within the schema, once you design the schema, you can actually set sensible defaults of whatever you want. In our case, we're going to say um, that yes is true, no is false, and we're going to ignore the rest. We don't know what they're for. After that, we hit submit and go back to the main process management screen. Our final step is to review the transformation and the rules that we've come up with. So we hit review transform, and we can see that we have a choice here. We can import all the data, we can import the latest only, or only after a specific date. So the latest only would be um, only the very latest row for each unique property. After a specific date, we can pick a date. This is the first time we're importing these path data in the schema here in this new system. Um, otherwise, what would happen is it would show the date for the latest data received in the last cycle. 
If you want, you can go back and review any of the previous steps and just make sure that you're completely happy. Review your categorizations and then go back to the transformation. Once you're happy, hit submit. At this stage, everything happens automatically behind the scenes. All the tasks are asynchronous. And when this is ready, um, if there are any issues with the data, you will see an error status report. Otherwise, what will happen is it will simply be imported into the database. Once we complete the transformation, we can go back to the process menu and see if it went through okay. In this case, we can see that there's an import error, which usually means that one or other of the validation steps along the way, checking each of the columns to ensure that the data are compliant with what we expect, did not work. If we check out the import error page, you'll see that it's given us the rows where those errors have turned up. And we can see there's an error here that says that the date actually says no, um, rather than being a real date. At this point, what we can do is manually download this file. Note that this isn't actually our source data anymore. This is now a semi-processed file. Um, so this is the complete converted file. All we need to do is go to these role, rows and manually decide what to do. This is the final step in terms of the validation process. The computer will do as much correction as it can, but if it can't figure out what it's supposed to do with something, it'll just throw it back to you and say to you, right, you go ahead and fix that. Once you're done, all you need to do is re-upload and submit, and it'll continue from where we started with the transformation and the fixed uh, step. While we're waiting for the bath data to rebuild, we can look at some of the other data that I've already played with. So Cardiff, um, has a much more complex structure. You can see over here, there's three, four, five different files. Now, these files can be sorted in order. They'll be joined starting at the left, um, essentially the top, and joining from second, third, fourth, joining from uh, uh, right to left. Any um, common file uh, fields are relabeled, and you might wish to keep in mind where you're starting from with the file names as to what sort of priorities you want when you start building your methods. With these, as you can see, the valuation office reference is the billing authority file name, uh, column name. And at least here, that seems to be common all across. But there's different data in every single file. If we look at the structure, that's relatively straightforward, but here, We've got a whole bunch of different fields. This is a, a large amount of data. Much of it is common, um, and we're not necessarily sure. So we can have a look here, and you can see some idea of what the data might look like. And you can see there's repeats, there's missing dates. Um, so we're trying to gap fill as much as we can from the data that we have. Uh, the rate payer name here, the order of the postcodes, and here we can see the, the categories that we've actually grabbed a whole bunch of columns um, with category data in it. We've wanted the data in the fields and we want to explore that. Finally, we, we have the occupation state date. And here we can see order by newest. Um, we're not quite sure what of these dates are in what sort of priority, where anything started and how it might fit together. So we can do account start date plus account start date. What that tells the system is that this account start date is the data we want, and we want to test it by this date. So this plus this, this plus this. Obviously, if it was a different type of column um, with a similar sort of date hierarchy, these could be different, but you're assigning a date field to a column, and you're basically treating these as pairs okay, with a plus. And here we do have uh, rates relief categories. Again, we've got a whole bunch of them we we're looking at. When we come to the categorization, you can see that again, there's this occupation status here, and we've pulled out all of these as much as we can to assign to true and false. There's a different category here. There's a huge number of different categories within this rates reliefs. And we've done our best to assign as much as we can going back to the local authority to try and find out what each of these terms mean. As you'll see, most of these terms here actually are for charities. Lots of different types of reliefs for vacancies. 
and a whole bunch of others um, that don't necessarily have any place anywhere else. And finally, we can transform it. As you can see, this has already been uploaded and the latest date in that data was the 1st of April. We have a similar way with looking at the calculations here in South Cambridgeshire. And you can see there's a mandatory relief amount, charity relief amount, and so on. If we wanted to do things slightly differently, we could group what we're doing here. So we can create a subtraction field, then create a nested field. In the nested field, we could run an entirely different calculation. So we could maybe pick out some columns that we wanted to run in order, and then whatever that order was, subtract it from the annual charge. So with these type of nested fields, we can create quite expressive methods. In this case, we could say, well, there's a mandatory relief amount. So we're looking for these amounts. So the order here is actually a calculation. So this is a, a more complicated way of doing exactly the same thing as we did before. Um, I could just have these out there without the nested. In any case, we're going to add all of these together and then just subtract the lot. So we're going to treat them as additions. Bring in the plus, and I'm going to say there's a mandatory amount that can be subtracted. There's a charity relief amount. Um, and so on. And at that point, we've got a nested calculation here. All of these will be added, and then whatever the sum of that is will be subtracted from the annual charge. So this is Squire, and this is the way in which we've been working with our data to try and improve the quality of our data wrangling and our data imports. The, the difficulty with data wrangling is that it's a highly complex task and it requires a great deal of thought about data quality. Um, as you can see, we've got uh, a matching percentage over here in this column showing how we uh, improve the quality of our data. What we're aiming for is a 98% uh, to 99% match. It's a really high quality import. Try and make sure that the data are not just um, uh, good coming in, but that they're meaningful. And that can only be done if we spend more time focusing on the process of data wrangling, um, the thinking through of how data might be brought in, rather than the physical process of copying and pasting, which is extremely tedious and exhausting for the person doing it. In any case, I hope this is of interest. And if you have any comments, please do get hold of us at squire.com.